There are some things you just don't want to hear. Have you ever had someone tell you something and you tell them, I don't want to hear it? There are some words that Jesus says that you just don't want to hear. What are they? We're continuing our examination of the life of Christ and others from the perspectives of living in a crucible. What is a crucible? In ancient times, a crucible was used as a container for melting or testing metals. Symbolically, a crucible is the trials we experience as we grow and develop. Crucibles are painful. They are uncomfortable. They hurt but they are beneficial in developing our character. God does not tempt us in developing our characters, but he leads us in the crucibles of life. His leading in these trials or struggles help us exercise our freedom of choice. They also help us get a better understanding of him and ourselves in relation to the great controversy or battle between Christ and Satan, good and evil. To have freedom and grow, we must truly experience trials for it is in the crucibles of life that our characters are developed. It was never God's plan for us to live in a sinful world and go through pain and suffering. He created us to live in a perfectly happy world, but to test our loyalty to him, he also created the tree of the knowledge of good and evil so that we could have the opportunity to choose. He gave Adam and Eve the opportunity to express their freedom of choice and show their love and loyalty to him by obeying his commands. Consequently, their freedom of choice has placed us in a world filled with pain, sorrow, and grief. It placed us in a battle between good and evil. It is now up to us individually to choose which side of this battle we want to be on. We're also seeking to determine how best to deal with these pains, sorrows, heartaches, and griefs while living in a crucible. Father, you have called us to be channels of light that reflect the character of Jesus. Help us fulfill our obligation by allowing him to light up the world through us. Use us as channels of blessings to others. Unite our human nature with your divine nature that through us, you may reveal yourself to others that don't know you. In Jesus name, Amen. Jesus was in Jerusalem just before his execution on the cross. Matthew reveals that Jesus spent his last hours before the Passover telling his disciples parables. The Passover was a time of celebration, commemorating the exodus of the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. Parables are stories told to teach a special message. Before the Passover, Jesus tells the parable about the 10 virgins and another one about sheep and goats. Why did Jesus tell these two stories? Both are related to how we should live our lives. They were instructions in character development. He was instructing his disciples on how he expected them to live. These instructions were to be followed until he returned. All around us, we see evidence that Jesus is about to come soon. So these two parables are very relevant today. They are more relevant today than they have ever been before. The parable of the 10 virgins is found in Matthew 25, one through 10. In this parable, Jesus makes a statement you don't want to hear. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to 10 virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. 
but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, a cry was heard, behold, the bridegroom is coming, go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered saying, no, least there should not be enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came and those who already went in with him to the wedding and the door was shut. Afterwards, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. In this story, the oil is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. The oil also symbolizes character. Character is something no one can give us. Neither can we give others our character. We can assist others and give others many things, but we cannot give anyone our character. Our character is composed of our thoughts, feelings, and behavior. The type of character that God wants us to have can only come from him. He wants us to reflect the character of Jesus. Thus, Jesus tells another parable. This time, it is the parable about the sheep and the goats. It also includes words that you don't want to hear. This parable is dealing with the type of character God wants his people to possess. The parable of the sheep and the goats is found in Matthews 25, 31 through 46. Notice the criteria used in separating the sheep and the goats. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory and all the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats and he will set the sheep on the right hand but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me meat. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous shall answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and fed you, or thirsty and, you, and gave you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in, or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer saying to them, assuredly, I say to you, in as much as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. Then he also say to those on the left hand, depart from me, you cursed into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you did not take me in. Naked and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty? or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister to you. Then 
he will answer them saying, Assuredly, I say to you, in as much as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Did you notice that the king separates the sheep and the goats based on what they have done, how they have behaved? Our character is revealed in what we do and how we behave. No, Jesus is not teaching that what we do saves us, but it does show how important character development is for those preparing to travel in his spaceship to eternity when he returns. God expects us to reflect the character of Christ, the one returning to redeem us from a planet that will be soon demolished. Our lives and behavior show what type of relationship we have with him. When connected with him, we will do the things he did when he lived on this earth. It has been said that character is what a person does in the dark, or our true character is revealed in what we do when no one is looking. Although others may not see what we do in the dark, Jesus sees. The one thing you don't want to hear from him is what he says in Matthew 25, 12, I do not know you. And Matthew 25, 41, depart from me, you cursed into everlasting fire for the devil and his angels. It's evident that something spectacular is about to happen on this earth. Many believe that Christ is about to come to get his people to save them from the impending destruction. God's people are often referred to as the wise. What is the characteristic of the wise? And how can you be sure you are part of that group? Find out in part five, the wise.